Picture this. You're at the dinner table, and all your relatives who just get a little too up in your business are sitting across from you. Your aunt, who just finished telling everyone about her son's wedding, turns toward you and asks, So, what about you? You have a girlfriend yet? But, of course you don't. You're still riding the high from the time a girl in your class said she liked your shirt. If only you'd spouted some of these near facts completely unprompted earlier in the evening. Then they would have all deduced the answer already, and you would have avoided this whole situation. Despite being made by a Japanese company, Near Gestalt was only released in English with Japanese subtitles. Most of the English cast reprised their roles in the localization for the Replicant remake. Furthermore, Gestalt was an Xbox 360 exclusive in Japan, while it had both a PS3 and Xbox release overseas. The original premise for Replicant was a fairy tale themed story of a young boy collecting 13 grimoires to save a mysterious girl. The names of some enemies in Replicant are holdovers from this premise, such as Hook, Mother Goose, and Hansel and Gretel. There were talks of a PS Vita version that combined Replicant and Gestalt, but these were scrapped by Square Enix to focus development on Dragon Quest X. If this had happened, then there'd be two Vita games that I'd care about. When Square Enix approached Platinum Games with a proposal of collaborating on a game, Platinum Games already had an idea of a Nier sequel prepped and ready, due to Takahisa Tara being a Nier fanboy. He then became the lead designer for Automata. Automata was originally supposed to be Platinum Games' big exclusive PS4 release. To sort of mirror and compete with their other own console exclusive Xbox One release, which was Scalebound. Needless to say, this did not happen. In a somewhat strange coincidence, Automata released the same week as Horizon Zero Dawn. Both feature a post-apocalyptic world filled with machines, were originally PS4 exclusives, and have the same score on Metacritic. Kira Buckland, the voice of 2B, likes to refer to 2B as Tubes, in reference to 9S's nickname of 9. I can see why this didn't catch on, though. According to Kyle McCarley, the voice of 9S, the Council of Humanity is voiced by Matt Mercer. This was stated by him in a livestream done with him and Kira Buckland, and is the only confirmation of this as the role is left uncredited. When he was made aware of the existence of Rule 34 of Automata characters, Yoko Taro politely asked fans to compile it in a zip file and send it to him. Nice. Speaking of Rule 34, for a few years the subreddit for 2B, uh, artwork, was bigger than the near subreddit itself. To finish the main story of the mainline Nier games takes about 48 hours on average. The completionist run, however, will take about 205 hours. Incidentally, that translates to about 41 5-hour energies needed to play them all in one sitting. When asked about how Nier Reincarnation relates to the rest of the series, Yoko Taro said it relates in a way that makes Square Enix money through gotcha. Now that you're armed with these highly interesting facts, you can navigate your way through social situations with ease. To tank your reputation further, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.